how you put the gallery together? The gallery itself? Mm -hmm. um, so basically I was uh, freelance uh, doing photography and videography in Auckland. Um, and my parents moved up to Whangarei about a year ago. Yeah. Um, and just through coming up um, during visits and the holidays and on weekends and stuff, just sort of made some connections here in Whangarei. Yeah. And the opportunity for the space just down on Bank Street came out. And, yeah. um, so I just jumped on the opportunity and thought um, it'd be a cool place to use as a studio, sort of work out of. Yeah. Um, and because, you know, there's a bit of room in that space. So yeah. um, I thought it'd be quite cool to... Um, rent out the front of it for different exhibitions and bring different artists into the space itself. And so you've only been here for about a year? Yeah, about six months or so. Wow. I like, spent a lot of time as a kid out at Matapodi as yep. well, just at yep. the beach. And so Whangarei is quite familiar to me, but um, it had been about 12 years since I've actually been back. And, you know, so relatively new to the area. Yeah. Um, and so you're, you're actually from Auckland? Yeah, originally from Auckland. Yeah. And this is what I've noticed recently in the last, mm -hmm. you know, since the last year, since I've been getting getting involved with the community a bit more, that there's a lot of people leaving Auckland, a lot of yeah. talented people. Mm. And this is the thing that people don't realize, it's a talented, skilled people yeah. leaving Auckland as well, who are coming here and finding a space which is more, I guess, more wholesome to their creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember when I was in Auckland living on, uh, on Simon Simon Street, oh, yeah, right with in the, the heart of it, right <laughs> in the heart of it, and having my days off to work on my co um, graphic novel, and the noise, oh, sure, and the you, noise would drive me nuts. Were I you studying. Oh, I was working full time, oh, but sure, on yeah. my days off, yeah. I'd sit down to do my work. Yeah, yeah, and I just couldn't think. Yeah, the noise was driving me nuts, and so yeah. we actually moved out went to Pemio, and oh, then sure. I was more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, but you know, oh, and so close to where I was. Yeah. yeah, I was in GI. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I grew up in GI. I spent the 90s in GI oh, and cool. working in, you know, so Penmuir, GI, um, sorry, and also um, for those people who don't know, GI is Glen Innes. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, who, who very, very, was one of the very first gentrification areas mm. in, uh, in Holland, yeah. uh, where they, because it wasn't a main highway from Pekaranga into waterfront and in the city yeah. all the houses were getting bought up along that line and yeah. some of them were actually one of them was my um I remember right was my dad's oh really you know and so yeah so all these houses were getting you know getting sold mm -hmm. off for about you know from valued at about a hundred thousand we'll be getting four hundred thousand for it yeah, so yeah. they could just clear out all these people and then suddenly you had like these very expensive wholesome whole foods thing in gi yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i'm going Come on. Uh, hey, it's nice, but yeah. these people can't afford these foods. Yeah. And then you realize, yeah, they can because now these people are leaving and other people are coming yeah. who have the money. It was, yeah, so it was quite interesting and quite sad actually because it yeah. meant that uh, people who took the money real fast now couldn't afford the houses. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and that's the amazing thing about the area mm. because there's so many different cultures in a small area. Yeah, man. But there's also there was so much poverty in that area as well. Yeah. Um. So. You came here, um, what six months ago and decided to do this, mm -hmm. but also tomorrow, uh, are you opening? Yes. A gallery opening. It's is this um toy yeah. two. Uh, toy two. Uh, it's a Te Ara exhibition, and it is the graduating for Cairo students from Te Wananga o Aotearoa. Okay. So, so tell me about the, that. Is that different to the uh, North Tech? Yes, yeah, so from what I know is they operate off the North Tech campus, but um, I believe it's like a different program. And yeah. It's a nationwide institution that mm. teaches traditional Maori arts. Um, so yeah, this one is their graduating students in Maori carving. So it's a awesome. group exhibition. There's, I think, about 14 artists wow. displaying their work. That's a lot of artists. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting because is, um, each of the work, work artists, everyone has their own sort of um, their message to tell and their own connection to each piece. So yeah. it, as a group, it you know really comes together and makes an interesting exhibition. I remember when I was back there in the nineties, I developed like arts course, mm. and so what I I mean a couple of weeks ago I went there because I'm going to be doing the um, Te Reo, um course 
And actually, oh, cool. Good and good. so that was a surprise to me to see that there because I didn't know they were there. Mm. And they were where where they're based is actually where the Applied Arts was. Oh, true. So you had the Maori, uh, Maori Arts there. You mm -hmm. had the glass blowing. You had the ceramics and uh, sculpture there. But you also had the jewelry there. Oh. And then you also um, and as well as you had the 2D arts there, which um, my artist friend Seven and Rebecca, uh, photographer Rebecca Evans, were in that, those classes. Sure. So to then see that um, Te Wangana take over that was interesting. And, mm. and, and then then you've got the, um, the arts have now moved, you know, traditional arts, non, sorry, non-Maori Indigenous art. Mm. And then you've got this, then the Jeff Oliver's, um, Jeff Gallery, sorry, Jeff Wilson Gallery yeah, and all that. Then you've got the normal, you know, arts there and yeah. and I've always you know um, it's, it's I, I just love seeing carvings I just love yeah. seeing um, contemporary Maori art as well because Absolutely. what what you see is interpret like you said interpretations of traditional yeah. art of how we visualize and how we speak and communicate that with new work yeah and absolutely. so you know so this is mainly carving yeah, so it's um, for Cairo and also some co fi fi as well. Yep. So um, weaving. Uh, it's uh, I think believe like panel work as yep. well, like panel display. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a range of stuff, and um, so we have the exhibition opening tomorrow night from six o'clock till nine p.m. Okay. Six p.m. to nine p.m. Um, that's at the Joji Studio and Gallery, which is twenty five Bank Street, in Fongaro. It's right at the corner of the uh, at the. Vine Street and um, always get mistaken. So it's Vine, Vine Street's Bank Street corner, isn't it? I it's think so. Just there. <laughs> it's like it's directly opposite the Killer Prawn. Mall. Yeah, yeah Killer, we, directly yeah. opposite Killer Prawn. So it's in between, across from Killer Prawn and in between um, the Headstones uh, shop there and Bob's Cafe. That's it. Um, and the, so the cool thing is, we're having the opening tomorrow night, 6 pm to 9 pm. And then on this coming Friday, we're also having live for Cairo, so live carvings wow. in the studio happening. That's awesome. And then also on Saturday as well. So there would be two days of live carving going on in the studio, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of students hanging around and asking questions and you know, just yeah. enjoying the work. Answering answer, um, questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is, the great thing about that is, I think, okay, you can see the work on the wall, mm. but you actually can... Connect with the artist, yeah. and you connect with the artist working, yeah. And I think that sometimes you just go, well, look, there yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and you then sort you of walk see a finished away, product. Yeah, you know, and then you don't see the hard work that goes into it. And a lot of people go, oh, I can do this, but they don't realize yeah. that each each piece or design has a meaning behind why that is there. Sure. And I think a lot of times when people go, oh, yeah, I can do that, yeah. but the time. Yeah. Especially with yeah. um, Maori and indigenous arts, I'm finding more and more about, um, even with Taimoko, yeah. um, people take for granted all the lines, all the designs, yeah. each, each, thing, each curve has a meaning, yeah. a story behind, so um, with the carving work as well, it's such a physical medium, mm -hmm. literally blood, sweat and tears go yeah. into it, you know, yeah. so to see these a final product of what these students have been doing you know it's it's really cool and um it'd be great to you know get lots of support from the community here in Whangarei because um the thing with the student exhibitions in, in the way I see it is they're the next generation of professional That's artists it. so if yep. we can keep encouraging them you know make it a really positive experience for them they're going to come back and come back yeah you know, I mean we were talking about like 15 years ago 20 years ago when I was at the Applied Arts I mean you know it's taken me that long to get back into it. Mm, you know, sure. I'm hoping to do some exhibitions next year with what what I learned on my skill work. Awesome. And you're you're right about the actual designs. There's actual meaning in them because yeah. I, I I've taken all my traditional knowledge mm -hmm. and you know like I, I utilize Celt, I utilize uh, Pacific Island tradition, I use like uh, Mayans oh, and wow. um, and here Indigenous Maori as well as my own um, um, my own culture. Sure. And so you kind of go, well, this is what I'm going to do with all this knowledge. Mm. And yeah. But then you have people who go, well, this is where I want to go with. And you're right about students. Uh, learning the skills we do not know. And I was just, we were just talking to um, just 
Michelle from System was saying, well, we don't know where these kids will end up in 10 years Absolutely. by learning these skills now. And the same thing with, the, with, with these students. We don't know who will break out and be the next big person in yeah, the world. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. exhibiting in the biggest you know, places in the world or galleries. Yeah. And the support is most important is that whenever somebody is learning, to support that learning. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's amazing to have that in the center of town. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're displaying it in the center of town. And same thing with, with Megan, with her one. You know, and I love seeing all these different galleries because it's because you have different to showcase whatever sure. you're doing absolutely and, and so you've got fr um, tomorrow friday saturday for the yep. three days or is it more so there's more um yeah. so this is the initial like opening period so we've got the opening night tomorrow 6 till 9 pm mm -hmm. um, then there's live carving friday and saturday and then from there um for two weeks uh from wednesday to saturday joji gallery is going to be open Mm -hmm. um, and so the work will be on display then for people to come by and check out. Um, but we also have live artist talk um, and taster classes. So one is on uh, Wednesday the 5th of December, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And the other is on Thursday the 6th of December, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So there'll be live korero about um, the different artworks, the yeah. program um, from Koro Tangi, he's one of the lecturers, so he'll be giving a presentation there. Awesome. Um, and talking about some of the processes. So, um, yeah, if you're free, come down and check it out, and um, hopefully it will spark some, some the next group of students to go exactly. there and study, you know. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's like, you got to, here's the thing that a lot of people, I, I mean, you come across, uh, sometimes you come across where people go, well, I don't want to teach what I know. Yeah, they hold it close. And it's just the strangest thing. I was like, well, or because um, then they'll be stepping into my field. It's like, mm. but you're going to be gone. Yeah. And you're going to take all that knowledge with you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's 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 kind of strange thing when it comes to art where people feel like that sometimes yeah, where sure. they don't want to pass on knowledge. And, yeah. Uh, and Share the techniques and that that's sort of it. stuff. And it's awesome to see people pass on knowledge. Yeah. Because... Especially something yeah. like for Cairo because it's such an ancient art, you know, it's been mm -hmm. passed on for so many generations that yeah. um, to meet people like Koro Tangi who... You know, to for him, from what I've gathered from talking with him, it's a really fulfilling experience to pass on that knowledge yeah. to a, a new generation. But it's not just young people at the course. You know, there's um, middle-aged people as well that have just sparked creatively and want yeah. to take a new path and um, an expression and that sort of thing. So it's a really diverse group of artists. So it's a um, real honour to have them in the space, and it's brought. Um, really cool energy into the gallery, you know, yeah. it's a real buzz about it, um, which is cool. So instead of just me having a tattoo there by myself, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, but that's the thing about it. Um, you actually display your own work there as well. Sure. Yep. Yes. So when, when you don't have the, um, I mean, you've got the gallery there, but mm -hmm. you've got space on the back there. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about what you do mm -hmm. um, visually. So you're with, uh, what are the, I mean, what is your um, discipline? Discipline um, is photography and videography. I studied at SAE Institute in Auckland. Okay. Um, did a diploma in um, film studies and post-production studies. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I had been at AUT. Yeah. Um, just did a certificate in art and design. Um, originally, was going for a, a bachelor program, but okay. this, you know, usual tale of you need to build your portfolio before you do that. So yeah, yeah. Um, so I did the certificate there. Um, enjoyed that. Um, then spent some time traveling and that sort of thing, but yeah. predominantly um, photography, videography, um, but I try not to limit myself in what work I create. Yeah. So pretty much in the studio when I'm, when I'm just by myself and I'm pretty much having a tutu with any kind of work, I, I just go wherever the inspiration takes me. So yeah. um, I'm pretty open to the to different types of work and I like learning about things. Mm. I, I've sort of figured out about myself in the past of the different jobs I've had yeah. in the past. You know, I've yeah. had a variety of different jobs and they're really exciting to me when I'm learning the process. Yeah. And as soon as I understand the process and like, this is what it's all about, even like bartending and that stuff, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. okay, now I sort of get it. Yeah. And then I sort of need to move on, you know. But yeah. with the cool thing about having the gallery space is that there's different artists coming in yeah. and I learn from them and I can talk with them and it's sort of an open dialogue 
and that's sort of what I really enjoy. So yeah, within my own work, I sort of just pick up, pick up inspiration from different people and um, just go wherever it takes me. What are some of the projects that you actually worked on? With film? Yeah. So film, uh, done a lot of uh, wedding videography, photography, yep. sort of subcontracting to different companies there. Um, in Auckland, I was working for um, Lion Beats, and um, the majority, pretty much all the weddings they do there are Hindi and Punjabi weddings. Yep. So yep. massive, massive weddings, lots uh, of colours, lots of food. Man, it's just a crazy oh, I love thing. it. You can make <laughs> it's a awesome. movie. Yeah, it's like it's a virtual movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, it's really stimulating uh, to um, take photos and video of because there's so much color yeah. and decorations. And my dad just does it all the time. He's been, you know, since like forever, like since the eighties. Oh wow! wow. You know, and he's he's sorry, since eighties now. Sure. So you know, it's, and it's just Indian weddings are the. It's like I would say like they're like Korean weddings. Yeah. You know, to a and also, wedding. they're very similar to. Yeah, I, think, I, I think also in golden weddings oh, wow. because of the color and the sure, and, the, sure. and you know like in and then Indian, Indian, Indian weddings are three three day events. Yeah, they're huge. You know, and um, you know, my cousin just got married um not this weekend the weekend before which I forgot to mention last week on congratulations um, to them. Yeah, last week on um on the radio. <laughs> so yeah, and so. You know, the guy goes through three days of cleansing, yeah, of purification. Sure. So that's just him. But the uh, turmeric. And yeah, and the then you got the female goes through the same thing sure. to get preparation. But then you have the marriage, and it's like a three-hour event. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I remember myself. Mine was a mixture of Christian and Indian wedding. Oh, awesome. And <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. It's so hot. There's a lot of pressure on as yeah. well. You know, the, there's a um, and it's expensive. Just all guests, yeah. how they, they like the offerings, blessings. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure on my groom. And, um, it's yeah. quite funny at some point, you sort of make eye contact with the groom and you're just like, come on, brother, you can get through it, bro. <laughs> Not long until the honeymoon. Like, yeah, it's just like, hang in there, bro. <laughs> after three hours, he's thinking, man, is this, is this, this poor guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the females dressed to the nines. Yeah, and beautiful. And so hot. Yeah. And the pressure, and I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. You know, but then everybody is there in their night. Yeah. I mean, my brother had a traditional, traditional oh, engagement, wow. and yeah. it was like, I look around, it's like pillars. I was like, what? Yeah. There's gold looking things, there's, you know, yeah, sure. reds and all this. But I mean, how do you connect with people that's totally doing a totally different traditional thing, and you're doing a wedding video for that? Um, so for that, for the most part, I had a really awesome boss. His name's Jagi, yeah. um, and he's he's just like he's kind of an older gentleman, but he's really young in spirit and yeah. heart, you know. Um, so basically, in those situations, I find if you're open and you're honest, yeah, and you have empathy or you know compassion for other people, people usually pick up on that and yeah. makes them comfortable. Yeah, um, and I think if you're just going in there with an honest sort of idea of I'm learning and yeah. I want to give them the best product possible, yeah. the, the culture itself sort of it comes second nature. You know, mm -hmm. for the main thing that I had to learn was the actual um, the kind of rituals. You know, so there's mm -hmm. like certain bowing at certain mm -hmm. moment, moments, and they circle altar, and like yeah. there's all these different processes that, as I'm filming or taking photos. I just need to learn these processes so I can get the best product yeah. for them possible. But yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part, um, you know, everyone's really warm and welcoming. Um, obviously, in it, any culture, you might get a few of the old heads. Yeah. That you're in the temple and they're sort yeah. of a bit like, who's this kind of white dude here? That you know. Yes. Yeah. But you know, there's there's people like that in any culture. So yes, you just move forward. You know. Yeah. And um, but for the whole experience, it was just really warm and and. Welcoming, which has been awesome. How long did you do that for? Uh, that was about four or five months as well. Okay. Yeah, so did a bunch of weddings, and yeah, through that time it just became second nature, you know? Yeah. Silly. Um, but just the music, the dancing, and the great thing about doing weddings is is that everyone's in progress. Yeah. yeah it's, you know, you're not going yeah. there and people are like, you, know, you know, that sort of thing. It's all a celebration, so it's yeah. just a positive experience, you know?
Awesome. Um, so what else have you been up to? Um, so basically, uh, you mean recently or just... Yeah, I mean, um, what was the last video yeah, okay, um, um, showing that you had? Uh, the last show I had was the um, Avant Garden, and that was artist um, who was displaying these uh, sculptural works um, that was connecting with sort of the Fenua uh, nature, that sort of thing. So it was um, layered structures made out of that um, Christmas tree material. Okay. So it came together, it sort of looked like a, almost like a maze garden within the studio, you know, wow. really interesting stuff. But um, for the, and before that, it was my own works. I did a series of um, photography works. Yeah. Um, and those have been, including this Totu exhibition coming up, these will yeah. be the first three exhibitions that I've had. And um, relatively new to the process, I'm almost mm -hmm. a student in gallery, running a gallery itself, yeah. you know. But I mean, um, Yeah, it's something, I mean, I've always thought, well, man, that's got to be a hard job to do, um, curating so many things, but... Um, but as an artist, it makes it harder because you yeah. got to choose who, who comes into sure. your space. Uh, uh, Richard Dews, by the way. Richard Dews was the artist um, that did the uh, sculptural work. Just cool. Shout outs to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's what's after Toy uh, 2? Um, so after Toy 2, um, I have not too many plans uh, set up in stone yet. I've given out a bunch of the artists that I've got for artists to fill out and just pretty much give back to me, I can have a little read through and a little understanding of what their work is about. Um, so there's about eight artists out in Whangarei, in the ether of Whangarei with those forms. Um, yeah. The thing is, is that pe you know, it takes a bit of courage to come into a space and sort of say, hey, I'm looking to have an exhibition. Yeah. Um, I can facilitate it for sure, do, yeah. my, do whatever I, I can to help, um, but at the end of the day, it's up to that artist to sort of choose when they want it, you know, and yeah. you, the more you if like you try and force someone to uh, put themselves in that kind of environment, yeah. the the more anxious and sort of um, uh, it's not as natural, you know. So I yeah. sort of leave people to it, and they'll come when they're ready. And, um, awesome. A lot of artists are looking to um, have the summer period to work on their art, yeah. and then um, sort of have an exhibition in the new years. So yeah. um, that will be exciting in two thousand nineteen. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking for 2019. I think it's going to be a great year because I think um, there's so much amazing stuff happening in Whangarei. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, um, and not, not only just traditional work, um, you know, multimedia work, uh, computerized work, digital work, you know, video. It's, we, we're coming to a point where there is so much amazing uh, artistry going on in Whangarei. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think... Each year we're building up. I mean, like um, the quarry was saying, this was the biggest year for their um, oh, wow. for the year for the Great Plate. Oh yeah, I you love know? what they do there. Awesome. It's like they had the most involved, most artists putting their stuff in sure. ever. Yeah. And you sort of think, wow, I, I would have thought this would have happened all the time. They said, no, 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 this is the biggest year ever, Absolutely. and you know, and they raised more money than they set out to, but that's because. People see the art, art, you know, the artists in the community see the value of it. Sure, absolutely. And so, when people see the value of a certain place, then they invest in that place. And I think that's what that's what people are trying to uh, are realizing in Whangarei that there, mm. there's a place to be invested in. Yeah. And um, and I think it's amazing to see all these little things that are happening, little things that are building up to bigger things. Absolutely. And that's awesome. So, thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Any last man. words? Um. Any last words? Yes. Uh. Just. If you guys are available, Toy 2 Exhibition at Joji Studio and Gallery. We're located at 25 Bank Street, uh, Whangarei. Um, we have the opening night tomorrow, which is 6 to 9 p.m., and then also live for Cairo Carvings on Friday and Saturday. Um, you can follow Joji Gallery at joji.gallery on Instagram. You can follow Te Wananga at Te Wananga on Instagram, and also uh, Joji Studio Gallery Facebook. Te Wananga o Aotearoa um, in brackets for a Northland um, on Facebook as well. That says all the info there. So that's spelled J O J I. Yeah, Joji, J O J I gallery. Thank you, James. Thanks for coming My in. Pleasure, um, man. That's us for today. Um, thanks for listening in. Uh, this is um, Malfunction on Beagle Radio for the Geek Out Show. Every week from 2 o'clock till 4 30, um, just yeah, having good conversations with creative people in the community and amazing people who are doing amazing things in our community 
and getting the message out that there's heaps of things to do out there for our kids and for adults as well. So thank you. Um, as always, uh, smile, um, be po kind, be polite, and smile to your soul. And hey, be kind to each other. Thank you for listening in. This is um, Malfunction. Have a good week, guys. And once again, check out um, all the other... Um, yeah, all the other DJs and all the other podcasts and so on and shows here on BeagleRadio.co.nz and 88.1. Thank you so much.